Daddy, apart from the crankshaft bearings, are there any other bearings that can wear out in my engine? Yes, people often forget about the injector pump drive bearings. Unless you're doing a fairly major engine rebuild, one of the things on a Nuffield or Leyland engine that you'll probably never consider being worn is the bearings in the injector pump drive. Here I have the back half of the timing case of a 3.8 BMC engine and this here is the drive timing gear that meshes with the rest of the gears on the bearings and shaft that drive the injector pump and you can see here it's got the casting on that takes the uh, Sims Minimec pump on a Nuffield 460 or 1060. These bearings being about a foot above the oil level lubrication is uh, a little bit of a problem and if you listen to these bearings when, when I spin them you can see what I mean. Fairly noisy. The bearings are lubricated by splash lubrication and there's a little trough in the top of the casting that holds the bearings, I'll, I'll show you that later. But the first thing you'll come across, you've took the front half of the timing case off, you've took everything off the back, is to get this assembly out of the timing case. The gear and drive flange attached to it are bigger than the hole in the back of the timing case where it goes out the back. Uh, so we'll have a look at how the book tells us we're supposed to remove it. Here we have the page from the workshop manual to do with uh, withdrawing the drive flange and it tells you to use tool 18G231 with adapters 18G231C and thrust pad 18G231A. Let's hope you've all got them. If you haven't got the tools that it specifies in the manual Here's how I did it. First of all, remove the nut from the centre that retains the drive flange on the shaft. Then remove the locking wire and the six bolts that holds the drive gear onto the flange. The drive gear will come off, you perhaps get a couple of screwdrivers just to flick it off, but it comes off quite easy. Then get half a dozen 516th UNF bolts. And you'll see on this one here, I'll hold it right up close to the camera, I've grinded a little point on it. I'll tell you why in a minute. Screw the six bolts in the six holes so that they go through the drive flange and press on the casing that holds the support bearings behind it. And then one at a time, go around the bolts, turn at a time, winding them in, winding them in, and it will push the drive flange off. Unless you've got set screws with full thread, you'll run out of thread. So you need to wind it out, put some packing behind it, wind it in again, but eventually you'll draw the flange off the shaft. Now the reason I told you to put a chamfer on the end is winding them bolts in and pushing them against the casing, it will put a little burr up on the end of the thread. So when you come to remove the bolts from the dry flange, you could damage and possibly wreck the threads in the flange, which is a problem when you come to put it back together. So put a nice little chamfer on them so you can withdraw them without damage. That's how I get the flange off. This is what it looked like before I washed it all down. As you can see the trough that's been machined out with the hole in the bottom for the spray lubrication is completely blocked by gunge. I'll get a screwdriver and just uh, give it a scrape. Disgusting. I guess that's what happens when you don't change the oil often enough. I've now stripped the injector pump drive and washed it off so that we can see what we've got and I thought we'd have a look at some of the components. First is the bearing housing and the cover plate that retains the bearing from the front. Then the two bearings, which we'll have a look at in a minute. The drive shaft, which has a mind of its own. And then we've got the gear wheel and the flange which it bolts to. And last of all, we've got the rear seal housing and the seal here. And we'll have a look at all those components in more detail in a minute. We'll now take a closer look at some of the parts. First of all, the housing that holds the bearings. On the top of it, there's this scallop here with a hole drilled in it. That is to catch oil spray to lubricate the bearings. 
There's two other holes here and here on the lower half to let the oil out. As you saw on the uh, earlier video, that was completely filled with gunge and that's why the bearings had gone noisy and slack. Here's the uh, rear bearing. As you can see here, there's a fair bit of movement in that and it's quite noisy. Then we come to the shaft and the seal that runs on it. I'll give you a good look at the shaft. The uh, 6205 sits here and the larger bearing sits at the front but not directly on the shaft. The drive flange goes in between them. But the seal here fits at the rear and this seal's gone that hard it doesn't even grip the shaft. And the seal runs on the shaft just here. So when you take it to bits, this one's okay, but have a look. If there's a groove worn in the shaft, you really need to get it metal sprayed and machined back to standard. Then we come to the drive flange. As you can see, the drive flange, the keyway's there. The drive, shaft, drive flange goes over the shaft, but inside the large bearing. When you come to put it back together, on the drive flange, there is a zero stamped there and on the gear there's a dot. They go together. But as it was so covered in gunge when I took it to bits I got the centre punch out and put two dots there and two dots there so that I could put it all back together properly. For anybody carrying out this repair the bearings that you'll be replacing the large one at the front is a 6207, the smaller one behind it is a 6205 and the seal at the back where the shaft comes out to drive the injector pump that is 7 8 by inch and 5 8 by 3 8 or the Geico part number is MI 087 162 3 forward slash 8. Once you've removed the front flange off this assembly, you can remove it from the timing case, strip it, wash it, and when you come to put the new parts in, first of all press the front bearing in, but don't put the rear bearing in yet. You must press the rear bearing onto the shaft first. Then using a tube, press the rear bearing and shaft into the back together. You cannot fit the shaft afterwards. Once you've done that, put the front cover on, put the four screws in, peen them over like it says in the manual, but don't fit the front flange yet. Remember this flange is bigger than the hole in the timing case. So you have to bolt this assembly back in the timing case, then you can fit the front flange. Plenty of grease on it, put it on, tap it in, once it's in so far you could possibly get the nut and washer on the front to pull it into place. Once it's home, refit the timing gear, lock wire, time it up as it says in the manual and put it all back together. Happy tractoring everybody!